Hi kids, this is lesson 12 in module six and we're gonna continue kind of with the same objective that we've been working on for the last few lessons. We're working with rules and creating rules uh, to generate a number pattern and then plot those points on the coordinate grid or the coordinate plane. So um, I'm gonna give you a rule and we're gonna apply this um, but you can look and see what could the rule potentially be because if you look at X and then you look at Y and you know that the rule has to be the difference between these two there are a couple different ways to go about it sometimes you can add and sometimes you can multiply but what's the difference between one and a half and three so you might say well I could either multiply this by two or I could add one and a half both ways I can get from one and a half to three. So if you said, let's add one and a half, let's create this as our rule for line L. And I would say, nice job. You notice that the difference between one and a half and three is one and a half. So let's come up with another point. I like to have whole numbers for the X so that I can kind of confirm my rule. So let's use something easy like two. When you look down on your graph, you can see we only are using numbers up to six and we have half counts on our number line. Okay, so um, I can use halves, I'm not gonna use quarters, but I also like whole numbers to confirm my rule. If the rule is add one and a half to X, and if X is two, then it's x plus one and a half equals y. Okay, x plus one and a half equals y. x is two plus one and a half. I get three and a half. Write your ordered pair, two comma three and a half in parentheses. Okay, now for points C and D, because we have established that this is the rule, and I've given you two points for sure that are on this line that we're gonna plot on here. You can choose whatever you want for C and D for your X value. Try to keep it, say, um, below five and a half or five and a half being your maximum amount so that you can keep your points on the grid. You can choose anything for X. Then apply the formula and you can fill in your Y that you get. Okay, now you can do that and you don't have to stick with me. I'll give you a three and a four if you can't think of any other points. Uh, and then add one and a half. So I would have four and a half. Add one and a half and I would have five and a half. Okay, now these are my points. You can have different ones if you feel like it. Make your ordered pairs. And now we're gonna plot the points. You can plot your points and I'm gonna plot the ones that I made. So we have one and a half, three, and again, this is X and this is Y, and we're counting by halves. <clears throat> so every other line could potentially have a big label on it with the half, but you don't have to label them all, just label a couple to remind yourself what you're counting by. Okay, gotta know what you're counting by. Every number line is different. Okay, so for point A, it's one and a half, three. So if you think of these as like streets, so I'm walking down X Street and I stop at one and a half, like an address, and then I'm gonna go up, okay, to Y at three, right there. Plot your point, and this is point A. Okay, label it. Now we need to plot all the other points. Two, three and a half. Walk down the street till you get to two, and then climb up till you get to three and a half. That's B. Three, four and a half. That is C for me. Yours may be different. D is four, five and a half. Yours might be anywhere up here, but notice that they will be somewhere along that line. Okay, now we're gonna make the line because that's the 
focus of our lesson is always to create a rule for the line. The line follows the rules. We talked about the points on the line. Okay, this is line L. Go ahead and label it. And so the rule was adding. Now notice that sometimes when I have x equals y and we start out in the middle, then we add something to x. We tend to have a parallel line to x and it's above the midpoint. Okay, now that's just following the trend that we've been working on the last few lessons. So what if we take a similar point like one and a half and three for y, okay? What did I mention back at the beginning? I said we could have add one and a half, but we could also have something else. And I can't know exactly what the rule is until I prove it, right? And what was that? Do you remember? Right, we can double this. Now, if I was to double one and a half, I could get three either way. The only way you can determine if the rule is going to be different is if you apply that rule. So <clears throat> y is twice as much, let's just say, as x, okay? Which would be x times 2 equals y. So if I want to take, say, a two, what would that be? Instead of three and a half, where this rule was at one and a half, the rule would give me four, okay? What if I have three? Instead of having four and a half, I'll get six. What if I take a fractional amount, like say three and a half, okay? You can double three and a half. 3 plus 3 is 6, or 3 times 2 is 6, and then 2 times a half is 1. So 6 plus 1 is 7. So what you want to do is what you want to take whatever you decide for your F and G points. You can always follow me for the first two. Once you have the first two established and you follow the rule, you can put any points that are on the graph, and they will still fit on here, except that 7 is a little bit off. So we can... Um, you can do a half that's in between. You could do like two and a half instead. Two and four, three and six. You can use two and a half and then it would be what? Two and a half uh, doubled would be five. I'm gonna stick with that and we'll uh, just put it right off the graph. So take this, plot your points. One and a half, three, notice is this same point A. We've already put it down and we're using it for this line, line M, as well. How about point E? Two and four. So it's two, but we're gonna be up here at four. And then three, six. And that's F. And three and a half, seven, and that would be like somewhere up here. And we'll put it very lightly because the line will determine where it goes. So I already have three points on this line. It's gonna be A, E, and F. So set up your ruler. And extend your line. Oops, probably should have been a little bit over. That's okay, pretty close here. So it goes through A, E, and F. And this is line M. So label that. And so what you should notice is that for both of these lines, they have a point in common. And that Remember that when you're creating a rule with multiplication, what happens to your line? Your rule with multiplication tends to have a higher slant in your line, a steeper slant. 
Okay, and it proves true here because this line is more slanted than this one that would be parallel with the x equals y. Our line is slanted for m because we are multiplying. So that's a pattern. Now, I, I want to ask you one more thing. Since point A has two lines that go through it, could there be other lines that could go through point A or contain this point? Could there be other lines? And I hope you would say, yes, actually there's an infinite number of lines that could contain, contain point A, okay? You can have this line or this line or this line, but most notably, you could have a line here and a line here. So what would the rule be if you have a horizontal line? Okay, what is the rule if there's a line that goes right through A and it's on this line? What line is this? What is the address? That's Y equals three. That could be a line that goes through point A. Could you have any other lines? Yes, an infinite number, depending on what the, the operation is. Now, this, this is just a single step operation. It's a multiplication problem. But what if you had like multiply by two and then add one? Multiply by two and add two. So you start to have these like many different options. What if you have a line that goes slanting downward? Would it be a minus? Would it be divided by? So how can you get these lines? So the other line would be uh, a vertical line that we can easily do for our fifth grade level. Okay, and so you want to use this one and a half as your uh, constant value. So if x equals one and a half, then that would be the address location of all the x points on this line that would go through point A. Okay, so this is the introduction to lesson 12. And um, I'm gonna have a whole different video for the problem set because it has three problems and I didn't want the video to be too long. So I hope this has been helpful. Be sure and click subscribe, come back again. But the problem set for 12 is on the next video. See you soon.